Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 27 in the douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 28 in the RSV. A psalm for David himself. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord. O my God, be not thou silent to me. Lest thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. The pit, in this case, refers to the grave. David is saying that he'll perish without the guidance of God, a statement that's just as true for all of us. Hear, O Lord, the voice of my supplication, when I pray to thee, when I lift up my hands to thy holy temple. Since there was no temple of God on earth at the time this was written, David is either referring to the tabernacle, or more likely, to the highest heavens where God dwells. The word supplication refers to humble and earnest petition, in this case, prayer. Draw me not away together with the wicked, and with the workers of iniquity destroy me not, who speak peace with their neighbor, but evils are in their hearts. Iniquity is evil doing. Specifically, this verse makes reference to those who deceive their neighbors with sweet words while secretly hatching evil plans. We recognize that these people are ultimately doomed if they don't repent, and plead with God not to allow the same fate to befall us. Give them according to their works, and according to the wickedness of their inventions. According to the works of their hands give thou to them. Render to them their reward. What evil people do to others should befall them. We ask that their evil plans will harm themselves, not because we want to wish harm on anyone, but so that God's justice will prevail. In some cases, a person can suffer misfortune because of something they did, and therefore learn a lesson, causing them to turn their life around and reform, like Spider-Man. Because they have not understood the works of the Lord, and the operations of his hands, thou shalt destroy them, and shall not build them up. Not that God goes around deliberately destroying things, but God can destroy evildoers in the same way that a tall cliff can destroy a careless driver. He chose to drive carelessly, and didn't recognize the cliff until it was too late. In the same way, those who reject the path that God lays out for us are speeding towards trouble. Blessed be the Lord, for he hath heard the voice of my supplication. We thank God for hearing our prayers, just as David did. The Lord is my helper and my protector. In him hath my heart confided, and I have been helped, and my flesh hath flourished again. And with my will I will give praise to him. God always helps and protects us, if not from everything, then at least from certain things. Our abilities to move, breathe air, and watch this video are all dependent on the assistance of God, because all of them are good abilities, and God is the source of all goodness. When we aren't starving to death, that also comes from God, and by an act of our free will, in response to the grace that God gives us, we respond by thanking and praising Him for His protection and His gifts. Our Lord is the strength of his people, and the protector of the salvation of his anointed. Our strength doesn't come from ourselves. The goodness of God surrounds us and strengthens our abilities at all times. We owe him everything, but he doesn't ask to be repaid, only loved. If we love and obey God, he will protect us from evil and save us, bringing us into everlasting life. Save, O Lord, thy people, and bless thy inheritance, and rule them, and exalt them forever. Finally, we ask that God will bless and protect the good things he's given to those of us who worship him, that he will rule us, continuing to guide and care for us, enhancing us and making us immortal. In heaven, all of this will happen. We just need to decide whether we want to be a part of that and do what's needed to accept the offer of God. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.